Hey guys, how's it going? Tess back again with another episode of the World Cup Squad Series here on my channel and of course on the Random FIFA Videos community channel as well. So if you're watching over there, feel free to drop the video a like and of course check the link in the description to my channel Chesnoy Gaming if you'd like to see more from me. But basically what we do with this series is we build a squad from a particular nation that's qualified for the World Cup. We quickly run through it in the background because this series isn't so much about the team itself, it's more about the World Cup history of the nation in question. So basically we're going to go through Australia now. We've done all of Group A, they've been uploaded over the previous four weeks and we're starting on Group B today with Australia. Now unfortunately today's episode will be a little bit shorter because uh, Australia's World Cup history isn't all that expansive. Um, to be completely honest, the, this is only the fourth tournament they've qualified for for Rio 2014 next summer. And if you compare that with last week's uh, team, Brazil, and their 20 appearances at the World Cup, it really highlights the uh, the golfing class between the two teams. But just a quick note on the squad in the background. Main players you would consider would be Tim Cahill, of course, and Mark Schwartz are the only two goal players in the team. We've bought in uh, Mal Yedinak from uh, from Crystal Palace as well, and any other play couple of other players you might recognise from uh, the English leagues. Reese Williams, who uh, plays for Middlesbrough, is a centre back, and then Scott McDonald up top, the striker for Millwall, who used to play for Middlesbrough. So uh, there's kind of a link there, but it's a decent squad actually. It played okay, got me a couple of goals, and you'll see those in the clips at the end, just where we cover uh, Australia's World Cup history. But uh, the uh, mentioning the uh, the golfing class between uh, Australia and Brazil, I have to say that recently Australia's uh, form at the World Cup has improved. Their uh, their past two tournaments have been their best. Their first appearance came in 1974 when uh, when the tournament was held in Germany and they were actually knocked out in the group stage in that uh, in that particular tournament having scored zero goals and only picking up one point. So uh, they, they would have been very very disappointed with that. But uh, they did much better next time. If you jump to Germany again, this time in 2006, they had actually won their opening game 3-1 against Japan. And uh, it, was, it was a really, really good game. I don't know whether any of you remember it, but uh, Tim Cahill scored two goals in the 84th and 89th minute. And then they scored their third in like st in uh, like the 92nd. It was second half stoppage time. So it came from 1-0 down to win it 3-1 in the last eight minutes. So that was absolutely mental. So that, uh, they would have been understandably absolutely delighted with that. And they did qualify from the, the, uh, the group stage in that particular tournament although they did in fact get knocked out the very next round in the second round in the knockout stages by the uh, the team that eventually won the tournament Italy it was a bit of a controversial game they uh, the scoreline was only 1-1 and there was a lot of controversy actually the Germany 2006 World Cup Spe almost as much as uh, there was at South Africa 2010 and at the uh, Japan and Korea tournament in 2002 so uh, maybe that's a bit of a sign of uh, to how FIFA run things but Let's not get into a uh, corrupt FIFA argument, shall we? So in 2010, they qualified for back-to-back -back tournaments. And uh, unfortunately, despite picking up four points in the group stage, they didn't progress. They lost 4-0 to Germany and then uh, drew 1-1 with Ghana, beat Croatia 2-1. And uh, unfortunately, their goal difference was enough to see them get knocked out. It was Germany and Ghana that progressed through to the knockout rounds of that particular tournament. So uh, they'll be disappointed with that, but hoping to do better this time around. Although, it has to be said, it is an extremely tough group for them. They've got Spain, the Netherlands and Chile in there. So uh, my prediction for Australia, unfortunately for, uh, for you Aussies out there, is that you're going to finish bottom of your group. I do apologise. That's just my honest opinion of what's going to happen in Rio. But uh, of course, their top goal scorer is actually tied. Tim Cahill and Damian Mori both have 29 goals for their country. And Mark Schwarzer, kind of unsurprisingly, holds the most caps for Australia with 109. Of course, he is 40 years old. So it's kind of not really much of a surprise that uh, that he is, in fact, the all-time cap holder and they were actually ranked as high as 14th in uh, the FIFA rankings in September 2009 so uh, they are a decent team especially with their recent form like I say this is the third tournament they've qualified for in a row they definitely have a decent crop of players this time around so they'll try their best I'm sure at uh, Rio 2014 although they really have drawn an extremely tough group so uh, I don't see them progressing but uh, that is going to bring this particular episode to a close guys thank you very much for watching please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind that would be be absolutely superb if you did enjoy feel free to subscribe to my channel as well there will be a link in the description to do so and if you're watching on random fifa videos and you aren't subscribed there then feel free to do so there as well because there's plenty of fifa content coming from that channel as well but that's going to wrap this one up so thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you next time